In this video we're going to make some high-end stainless steel camp knives on a low-end homemade CNC machine. I'm going to be giving these away to a few subscribers, so if you'd like one, I'd ask that you like, subscribe, and leave me a comment below. A few clicks for you goes a long way for me in paying for these materials and bringing you more low-quality YouTube content. We'll go through every step in making both the blades and the handle scales, as well as the design and machining of the fixtures that we need to make them. There are 1 8 ABL blades with a full flat grind, and the handle scales are made from G10. The CNC mill is a converted Precision Matthews PM30 MV, and it's running a Centroid Acorn control. I've left a link in the description to a video that goes through every step in making your own if you're interested. It all starts with the design in 3D. The CAD program I'm using is called SolidWorks. It's an expensive software I've got access to through my day job, and if you're interested in 3D design, I'd recommend Fusion 360. It's free to download, and you can do all the same things you're going to see in this video. For this knife, I wanted it to be disassemblable, so the handle scales aren't permanently pinned or glued to the blade. They're held on with number 8 machine screws and threaded into some standoffs that tightly clamp the handle scales to the blade. Once there's a design, we've got to think about how we're going to hold it during machining. For my knives, I like using a fixture plate with two stations that let me machine both sides of the bevel. In the first station, we machine the right bevel only. Then in the second station, we machine the left bevel, then cut out the final knife shape. Before we can do that though, we've got to put some holes in the steel stock so we can bolt it down to our fixture plate. And that's what the stock prep stage is for. All those thin yellow, green, and blue lines are the paths that the tool is going to trace during CNC machining. This is what it looks like after the stock prep. For me, a big part of the fun of CNC knife making is that you get to design the fixtures and the whole process so that it works for you and your machine. We're going to make the blade fixture out of 1x5 aluminum stock. I like to start by cleaning it up into a slightly smaller but much more accurately square piece of material. We deck off the top with a big fly cutter. and clean up the perimeter with a 3 8 3 fluid aluminum end mill. Then we'll just flip it over and take off the remaining material we were holding in the vise. The last step in making the fixture is to put in all the threaded holes that'll let us clamp down the blade in the first and second stations. We spot drill little countersinks before pilot drilling through the stock. I like to add a little drop of cutting fluid on every hole for a nicer wall finish during drilling because my machine doesn't have flood coolant. When all the holes are in, we've got to thread them. The right way to do this would be either thread milling or rigid tapping, but because thread milling isn't the fastest and my machine can't really rigid tap, I'm using a pretty squirrely combination of CNC control and manual tapping. I use the CNC control to park the spindle directly above the hole, then I use the quill to manually plunge the tap. Using my own judgment for hole depth, then I'll manually stop and reverse the spindle to pull the tap out. You can imagine how many ways there are for things to go wrong here, but in aluminum, I find this works pretty well. These little dowel pins are critical for accuracy. All the threaded holes are going to be used for bolts to clamp down the stock, but these are going to be used to position it. The holes I'm sliding them into are only one thousandth of an inch bigger than the dowel, and the same is true for the holes in the blade stock. So when we move the knife from the first station to the second, we can be sure our knife's going to be in the perfect position, and we're not going to have any misaligned features on either side of the knife. Here you see me positioning the blanks onto the dowel pins. Once they're down, they don't wiggle at all, and that's because of the tight one thousandth of an inch clearance between the pins and the holes. So, after we bolt the blanks down, they're not only rigidly held, which is what the bolts do, but they're accurately positioned, which is what the dowel pins do. It's critical because the CNC machine is going to blindly machine the bevel in this exact spot every time. So, if the blank is sitting crooked or uneven, the bevel and all the other features are going to be machined in the wrong spot. With our stock in place, we can start the program. We interpolate a little hole in the stock to give ourselves something to plunge into, and then start cutting the bevel. When it's done, we flip the stock into the second station and load up a new blank in the first. We can now start the CNC program that'll finish the second bevel before getting started on the new blank's first bevel. 
I really like this two station system because it means less part changeovers. You can sort of do two knives at the same time without stopping the machine. This is what the knife looks like right off the mill. We've got some hand finishing to do to polish it up, but the bulk shape is there, and the blade thickness is perfectly even, which I love. It comes out a little under 25 thousandths every time, which will come down to around 20 after hand finishing, and that's perfect for this kind of knife. The blade will be nice and thin and slicey for light work duty like food prep, but still strong and beefy enough to get beat through a log and split some firewood. We also need to make some handle scales. Those transparent boxes around the scales represent the G10 stock we're going to machine them out of. Ideally, we'd want to hold the stock up on some kind of pedestal like this to give us machining access to the entire part without running into fixtures or vice jaws. To do that, we'll have to put in some threaded holes we can use to hold them from the back, and we'll also put in some dowel holes for alignment. These are the tool paths that we're going to run on the back of the handle scales to put in those features. This time, we'll thread mill the holes since they're blind and not very deep. We'll do this the easy way, by holding the stock in the vise, and the dowel holes will go in first. Then we move on to the counter bores for the threaded standoffs. These are the features that are going to align the handle scales to the blade, so if they're in the wrong position, the handle scales aren't going to line up with the tang. We'll put in the lanyard hole, and then thread mill the screw threads for our M6 screws to hold the scale onto our fixture plate. I check the threads and dowel holes for fit before moving on, just in case. If we catch a mistake here, we can still fix it. I also like to add this 20 thousandths deep relief, which is inset from the tang about 150 thousandths, and this will seal the perimeter of the scale against the blade six times tighter, just to guarantee that no dirt or moisture make their way in. Now we've got all the features we need to hold the stock to the fixture plate. Again, the dowel pins let us accurately locate the stock, and the threaded holes let us bolt the scale down from the back. Now the scales are rigidly held in position for final machining, and everything should come out aligned perfectly. The fixture for the scales is made in the same way as the blade fixture. We start with a raw 1.5 by 2 inch bar and square it up. We again deck off the top with a big fly cutter, then rough in the bulk shape before taking a finishing pass at full depth to get the nicest, most accurate finish. We flip it over and remove all the stock we were holding in the vise from the other side. Now we'll start on the back side, putting in the counter bores for the M6 screws that'll hold our scales from the back. Then drill out the clearance holes for the screws. With all that done, we can flip the fixture around and get started machining the pedestals. The quarter inch end mill we're going to use for 3D surfacing the scales has a large 60 thousandths radius. So to cleanly finish the vertical wall around the perimeter of the scale, we're going to have to run the end mill at least 60 thousandths below the bottom surface. And that's why it's nice to have the scales up on these pedestals. It gives our end mill some clearance for that final finishing cut. Last, we put in the dowel holes. A tight clearance here between the pin and hole is super important. So the scale fixture is done. We can load it up in the vise. Let's show the CNC program where the reference position, or work coordinate offset is, by probing the top right corner of the fixture plate. This is a position we chose in CAM, and it could have been anywhere, but this corner is nicely accessible by the probe, and I didn't show it, but all the features on the fixture itself, like the pedestals and dowel pins, were machined with respect to this corner, or work coordinate offset. Let's first cut in the counter bores for the number 8 socket head cap screws that'll clamp the scales to the blade. Then we start shaping the scale. The first thing to do is to cut out the main 2D shape. After that, I like to run a 3D adaptive toolpath that'll rough out the 3D shape. It doesn't leave a very nice finish, but it removes the bulk of the material so that the finishing toolpath can do its thing, which is finally removing any remaining material to achieve the final shape with the best possible finish. Right off the machine, the texture and grain of the G10 are hidden in a chalky finish. But a little bit of WD-40 and a quick buff brings out all the detail of the grain and the color, and I think the black's my favorite.
Now we've got some blade blanks and handle scales. These have been roughly hand finished in preparation for heat treatment, so they're not perfect yet, but this is a good time to check the fit. And this is where, if you're making the first knife, and if you've made a mistake somewhere in the process, it's going to show up. I aim for a fit between the perimeter of the handle scale and the knife tang of about two to three thousandths of an inch, which is around the thickness of a human hair. Now, if I'm being honest, that's not so easy to hit on these little hobby machines, but when you align the stars, it does happen. I found that if all the dowel fits are tight, and I use the same work coordinate offset to machine the fixtures as I do to machine the work pieces that get mounted on the fixtures, and the machine is warmed up before starting the job, the accuracy possible on these little mills always surprises me. Now, if you do have some misalignment, you can fix it on a belt grinder by shaping the assembled knife, but I really like the idea of having everything perfect right off the machine. Sometimes somebody using one of these knives might want a different set of handle scales with a different color liner or texture or something, and being able to send them replacements that are just going to fit right out of the box is really nice. After heat treatment, the blades are a little blotchy and discolored. But some hand finishing after heat treat brings back the satin finish brighter than it ever was. And that's what you see on the bottom knife. The knife at the top was glass bead blasted, which gives a uniform dull finish that's also really nice and makes the primary sharpened bevel really pop. The very last step is to sharpen the knife, and I use the Lansky sharpening system. It takes more time than powered grinding systems, but it's easy to do and you'll never risk overheating the steel, which can ruin the heat treat on the blade's edge if you're not careful. I'll finish the edge with a quick strop on some leather loaded with compound, and the result is a crazy sharp edge. If you enjoyed this video, please consider a like and subscribing. When YouTube helps me pay for all these end mills, it makes my hobby look a lot less dumb to my girlfriend, so I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.